It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Robots, skeletons, and unicorns. Big wheels, elephants, and astronauts. It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Painting can take you where you want to go. It's the Mr. Fitzy Pain and Show. Welcome to the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Today we're going to paint an owl. That will be exciting. So right away, I'm going to start off with a big brush and dip it in the water and mix a little bit of blue with a little bit of green for my background. And remember, when I use a lot of water, and just a little bit of paint, we call that a wash. Now, I'm trying a different, different type of paint today on our Mr. Fitzy painting show. This is oil paint, but it's a special kind of oil paint that you can mix with water. So, oil paint takes a little bit longer to dry and it has a little bit different appearance on the canvas that we paint on. So this is the first time that I've used these kinds of paints. So I'm pretty excited to see how they turn out and how the colors mix. I've decided, I was looking through different photographs of owls to pick which one I wanted to paint today. And I thought that the owl I wanted to paint is called a Eurasian Eagle Owl. Eurasian means it's from the continents of Europe and Asia. So they're not in North America where the United States are, these types of owls, but they're the biggest owl in all the world and the reason I picked them is because they have such beautiful red orange eyes so I wanted my owl to have red orange eyes now owls are nocturnal now who knows what that means that's right it means that they're awake in the nighttime and they sleep in the daytime. But because this owl has red orange eyes, I decided to make the background a sky blue so that our owl could look very good with the their eyes because red, orange, and blue, green are what we call complementary colors. And they contain all three primaries because red, orange is red plus yellow, and blue, green is blue plus yellow. So we have red, yellow, and blue in those sets of colors. And that makes them interesting to look at. So we've got our sky going pretty well. Might need a few more spots. Maybe mix a little bit of white in there so that it's not too dark. Of course, maybe we want it to be evening time where our owl is just waking up for the day. There we go. Now we've got a pretty good wash in there for the background. We might have to add some more in later, but I want to start on painting my owl. So I'm going to remember to wash out my brush 
And that's the nice thing about these oil paints. You can wash out your brushes just using water. Normally, you have to use a solvent when you do that with oil paint, but these kind work a lot easier. Now I'm gonna do the underpainting. Do you remember what that is? That's where we use the values, the lights and the darks. And we paint in the shapes of the owl first. So I'm gonna use black, a smaller detail brush, and think about what shapes could we use for the owl. I like to think that the head is a lot like a gumdrop shape. So it's a semicircle, half of a circle. And it looks kind of like that. Now, these eagle owls have kind of long ears. So I'm gonna paint mine owl with his ears raised up. Maybe he just woke up. Could be some feathers coming out of there too. And the shape of the ears looks just like that. There we go. Now, the body is like what shape? That's right, an oval. So, I make an oval for the body, and I remember to leave some room down at the bottom because we're gonna need room for that tail feather coming down. And the tail feathers, you can start by making big triangle shapes. There we go. Now, what do I need next? How does an owl fly? You got it, they're wings. So I'm gonna make one big rectangle for the wing of my owl. Now my owl has lots of feathers and the feathers you can make like loops like this. Sometimes the tips might be a little more pointed, sometimes a little bit less pointed. And there's gonna be all kinds of colors in my owl. There's browns and blacks and even a light yellow. The feathers might be bigger in the middle of the wing, but by the time we get to the bottom of the wing, Feathers may be smaller and closer together. So that's one thing that artists have to think about. They look very carefully. And I looked at photographs of owls before I did my sketch, my drawing of an owl. And now I'm working on my painting. There we go. Now I've got the start of the feathers and his other wing might just kind of be peeking down like that because it's on the other side of him. Now let's think about the eyes. One of the things we can do with an owl is make two diagonal lines. Almost looks like a big letter V. And that will show us where the top of the owl's head is. And then owls have big circles for eyes, right? So one on this side, and then one on this side. And in the middle, we're gonna need black for the big pupil of the owl. And black on the other one. Ooh, that looks pretty good. You might say he looks a little bit angry. Can always smooth out that V a little bit, relax them a little bit. All right, then the, the beak, just like that, it's black. And it's got 
a little point at the end. In the owl's head, there's also a lot of black feathers that go towards the outside and some up on top of the head too. Now I could start to think about maybe some of the grays that I might put in, some of the darker shades, the different values we call them. And you can kind of lightly put them on top. And then later, I'll put some more colors over the wings. All right. Now, let's just get kind of quickly some of his feet as claws. They have four claws, but when an owl's perched or standing on something like my owl's going to be, we see three of the claws that go around the perch and then one goes behind. So there's one of his feet and let's see his other foot. Maybe we'll only see one of the claws. Sometimes you can't see the whole part. You just see little bits of the animal or the person that you're drawing. Now I'm going to wash my brush off. And I'm going to start to think about putting in some browns. I've got a uh, umber color, a darker brown, and I can start to put it on top of my owl to give him some more color. And on the feathers. There may be some brown, maybe the tips of the feathers I could make brown. And I can start using this ochre color for that yellow. See how that looks? Whoop, there's a little drip. What can I do? Well, sometimes you can just leave drips and see how they work. Other times you could wipe them with a the rag. I think that's okay, that drip right there. And I think that you can see how the oil paint is thick and stickier. And so we can blend one color by dipping it right on top and putting it right over the yellow. So that makes a lighter yellow. And I'm putting some white around the eyes and on the top of the head. And this is where the painting starts to get fun and exciting. When all the different colors, and you can see how bright my browns and my blacks look against that blue-green sky for our eagle, eagle owl that is. So, if you think about it, it might be pretty fun to be an owl and be up at night and asleep during the day. What kind of things do you think that our owl will do at night? They'd have to eat, probably like to fly around. And they like to make noise. What does the owl say? Woo, woo. Go ahead, try it. Woo, woo. It's very fun. I think it would be exciting to be an owl. So, I'm filling in my browns and my whites. Every owl is a little bit different. There's wood owls and barn owls and screech owls and eagle owls like this guy. You can also 
invent your own kind of an owl or use different colors. Maybe use green or make your owl red just for fun. That's the great thing about a painting. It doesn't always have to look exactly like an owl would look if you saw them in a field or flying in the air. Now, kind of take a second and take a step back and see how my owl's doing. I like how it's going. I'm going to work a little bit on that perch to make a branch, the underpainting of the branch using the black of where my bird is standing. Where's my owl at? He's going to be in one of those tree stumps that's right down by the trunk. And there's a lot of thick trunk part of the tree left. And then I'm going to paint browns on top of that. I might need to squeeze out a little more brown. And now might be a good part, a good time to think about those eyes. Red orange is my favorite color. Sometimes people get confused because it's not red and it's not orange, it's red orange. Red plus yellow gives us a real bright red orange color. So I load up my brush, I mixed some red with the yellow and I load up my brush with red orange and then all around in the middle of those eyes is the black pupil but all around there's where that orange is going to be. Red orange. There we go. Sometimes I might add more on once the paint dries a little bit but I want to get a good start now can you see what I was talking about earlier? How red orange and blue green are complements. So artists use those complementary colors to their advantage in their work. Because they know that if they use those color combinations, one color next to the other, it will make their painting more balanced and easier to look at. There's an artist named Henri Matisse, that's Henry in French, and he was one of the best at using colors. And he had a painting called Harmony in Red and Green, where there was a lot of red and green, because that's another set of compliments. So if you get a chance, look up in the library, Matisse. See if you can find a book if you don't know of any of his paintings. He was wonderful at using color. But lots of artists use these color relationships, that's what we call them, to make their pictures more interesting. And one of the things that you learn when you go to school to study art is that color is a part of science and it's a part of art. So it can be kind of tricky to learn all the different ways to mix colors and what effects they can have in your work. But it pays off to study those kind of things because then it helps you make a more exciting picture. Now I'm mixing white in with my umber and my ochres to get different colors of tan, we'll go to a cadmium yellow because this kind of owl has a lot of yellow in him. And now's the part where sometimes I just jump around a lot and just kind of feel where does this picture need some more yellow? Where might this owl need some more black or brown? Let's get that 
leg going and a little bit on the claw. There we go. Right around the branch. Now I might need to go to a medium sized brush so that I can fill in my tree. And even in the tree, I can mix my colors. There he is perched on that tree. Another thing that I might be thinking about is what time of year is it? Is it going to be the winter time for the owl? Is it going to be the summertime? I don't have to decide yet. I can think about that later when I'm all finished. I really like this water thinning oil paint. If you're older, or when you get older, you can see if you can get a set and try it out. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Now we've got a tree stump for our owl and more feathers. Birds have a lot of feathers. Now I might just get a little more expressionistic. Have we talked about that before? Where you can feel the brush strokes and see how one color mixes into another. Don't even worry about exactly where your underpainting is at. Now you're getting thick into your owl. But don't forget, take some time, take a step back. Maybe the eyes need some more black. And owls have a lot of black in their feathers too, so I'm not just going to use black in my underpainting. I'm going to start to put some black back in my next layers. Artists use layers, one color on top of another color. I think he's coming along pretty good. I might want some of those zigzag patterns on his body. If you've ever seen an owl, they have some zigzags to their feathers. So a zigzaggy brown. There we go. That's making a lot of sense. I'm going to go way down, whoop, I need to wash my brush out, I'm getting too much black in my cadmium yellow. So I stopped, squirted out a little more, cleaned my brush, and now I can go back in and start to make some more of those feathers. I really like thick paint. It's one of my favorite things to use. And I think it's especially good when you're thinking about a bird. That's what keeps them warm, right? They're thick feathers. There we go. I'm starting to see it. It's a very colorful owl, I think. A lot of people like owls. What do you think? Picasso, another famous artist, Pablo Picasso, he was from Spain and he lived in France a lot of the time. He had a pet owl and it would bite him on his finger. I don't think usually people have owls as pets. Pablo Picasso had a lot of different kind of pets. I don't think I'd want an owl to bite me on my finger. Their beak looks kind of scary. There we go. A little bit more black around the eye. 
when I go to a back to my bigger brush and get back to the sky. We've got to fill in some of those parts of sky. Although maybe some of this white down here could be piles of snow. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe it could be an owl in the winter. So I'll try to think about what parts to leave plain and what part to add to. That can be one of the trickiest things about painting. How to know when your painting is finished. Whoop. Got a little bit of brown into my blue. That's okay though. We can wipe it. Get a little more blue. Go back in there. There we go. Maybe it's getting towards nighttime. There we go little bit more water that gets that wash to flow in there. I can blend it in a little bit. All right. That's another one of those times where I'm going to take a step back, see where I'm at, what might need a little bit more. Maybe that darker blue looks to me like it could be a rainy day owl. I was never thinking about that, but I think this might be a rainy day owl picture. I'm going to go through. Give it just a little bit more of that red orange color, real thick, right around those eyes. I want my owl to be awake. Really see those eyes. Then I'm going to take another real small detail brush and sign my picture. F I T Z. That's Fitz or Mr. Fitzy. And if you've been following along and painting your own owl, you can do the same. 15 for the year. And that's about all the time we have. Thanks for joining me on the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Hope you had a good time. And see you next time. It's the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Robots, skeletons, and unicorns. Big wheels, elephants, and astronauts. It's the Mr. Fitzy Painting Show. Painting can take.